Hey, everybody. I am so excited to be talking to the one and only uber gifted, uber beautiful, amazing Kelly Price. Hello. How are you so doing? Long. Can you tell them how far back we go? You go back almost to like the, the starting point with me. It's, Again. it's almost 30 years, but I want to say I've, I've been... I've been knowing you in this space for at least 25 of those almost 30 years, I would See, say. Again, I wouldn't think you would remember because you're Kelly Price. <laughs> no, I do. I promise you I do. I well, but you're right. Back to the, I was going to ask you, do you remember back in the WGCI V103, all the, especially GCI when we had all those yeah. big music seminars, Elroy yes. Smith. I mean, uh, Elroy. Yes. 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 But you look amazing thank you dot com point blank period do they still Aww. say that thank you <laughs> and happy belated birthday thank you i made 48 i'm getting ready to tip over to the 50s club i'm excited well you know, well, you know what you look great but enjoy your 48 and then your 49 then you get yes. to you let's not rush it yes. always tell yes. people let's enjoy the journey okay oh, i'm enjoying it i am enjoying it i am loving being in this space i say that this is the time of life where you're, you're too old to be young and dumb uh, too young to be old and numb so i love it sweet spot. i love it kelly <laughs> price man i mean okay real quick how does it feel to be able to open your mouth and anything that comes out sounds great <laughs> I mean, ABC, one, two, three, don't rate me. <laughs> oh my God. Anything that I, comes out sounds great. I, 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 would, I, I, would, I would reserve that question for like uh, her music and Jasmine Sullivan and Karen Clark shit. I like, I, I just, but you know what? Um, it, it is, it's a gift and it's a blessing. And I'm grateful for it because as much as it has ministered to other people, it has first been self ministry. Okay. As much as it has healed other people, it has been self-healing. Okay. Um, when all the way back to my childhood, when there was nothing else, there was music. And mm. I could express myself through a song, either that I knew or even from a very young age, I would just write what I was feeling and just start singing the words. Mm. Um, so it has been one of the greatest gifts of my life in that um, God used it to help me mm -hmm. then help so many. Wow, that's a blessing. Congratulations on your new EP, Grace, and yes. your new single, Dance Party, on Motown Records. I mean, Motown Gospel. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, it's like, okay, Ch uh, Kelly giving us some dance, but, and, and I'm, trust me, I need some DW3 oil. Okay. <laughs> I don't have no more. All, right. <laughs> All It's about the energy. It's about the joy. It's about the intentionality of, of oh, being boy. in that space. That's literally what Dance Party is about. I love it. We're going to talk about all that real quickly, though. Let's start off for people who don't know. Your foundation is in the church, in gospel music. If I'm not mistaken, you used to sing with Donnie McClark in the New York Restoration Choir. Yeah, if you go back and look at that old cover. <laughs> I'm on <laughs> that to my heart. I, yeah, I'm on the, uh, so the cover with the choir and you see the skyline of New York behind us. Uh -huh. And yeah, if you go back and look, you see a young Kelly Price with her shag haircut. That, oh, was, wow. that was the style back then, late 80s, early 90s. They had my little long thing happening back here with the short thing up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I have known Donnie for a long, long time. I, just to, And he used to come to my grandfather's church a lot as okay. well to minister okay. so um yeah all, that is that is it's not only my foundation it is it just is my life you know I, it's, it's weird anybody that's ever attended a church that i've been a member of can attest to this that in between the tours and in between the plays and in between the everything mm -hmm. i was at bible study in the middle of the week i was at church on sunday morning and sunday night Oh, I was wow. serving. I was, I was, you know, if they were, if they were selling, if I was home on the weekend and they had stuff going on at the church, I'd come to the church. My kids would be there. I'd make them, they would have to do, that was a great punishment, actually. I just got totally <laughs> Go to church. We're going to church. <laughs> we, no, we, we were going to church. Oh no. One of the punishments for my kids, they got in trouble. So th the people were cleaning the church uh -huh. and they were cleaning all this gum and stuff that was stuck on the okay, bottom okay. Of, the, of the pews where people would stick their gum. I told my kids, you're going to the church this weekend to help them pick the gum off of the bottom of the, you're in trouble. That was punishment. I, I, 
okay, I just went all the way left. I'm sure it was for a kid though, you're right. right. Now, I thought it was so cute. I read an article, you said you felt like you were in church nine days a week. Yeah, yeah, we had like two extra days in my family, I'm convinced, because we never left. The only time I left church was to go home and to go to school. <laughs> Literally. Oh, so you are a church girl, for real. I am. I really am. I, and being a part of the pastor's family, you don't get time out. You don't get time off. You don't get days off. I can remember times when, and, and anybody that really is in church understands this. If somebody got an attitude or people decided I'm not singing this Sunday, I don't feel like it. My sisters and my mother and I, we were the choir. If people got at it, my mother was the choir director and she didn't play. So if you weren't prepared or if you didn't come to rehearsal, you couldn't sing. And for the times that people tried her on that, she would let them know, we get this done. And so there were, there were a lot of times where the choir was me, my sisters and my mom. So like literally, and not because we didn't have choir members, but if you didn't come to rehearsal, she didn't play that. You can't oh, sing. I love that. I love <laughs> it. But then of course, what a great choir, your family. My Hello. family, my family was they the can, choir. They anything like you, <laughs> that was probably the best choir in New York. Everybody in my family gets down on instruments and sings or writes or a combination of the three. And, um, and yeah, so I came up music in my household growing up and in my family was language. I didn't realize how unique it was, especially being a kid that sang okay. like that. Um, I didn't realize it until like I started going to school mm -hmm. and realized that when we got into chorus class and music class, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm hearing the music teacher hit a note on the piano. And she's saying, hit the note. I'm hitting it and there are other kids that are not hitting it. And I'm looking like, you don't hear that? You don't hear that? So it literally took me to go to school to realize that that music was not something that everybody did because everyone in my immediate surroundings okay. did it. Okay. So what do you play? You 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 play instruments as well? Piano, piano and guitar, but I don't feel like I play it well. I, I don't play either of them well enough to pull them out on on. And last year, I, I'm gonna do it though. I, last year when I realized we were going um, into like quarantine, mm -hmm. um, I looked at my guitar. I said, you know what? Since we got to be at home for the next couple of months, which turned out being the whole year, uh -huh. um, I should just pick this back up. And I got you know caught up in the year and losing so many people that I, it wasn't my concentration anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, piano and guitar, piano and guitar, but not, I wouldn't want to do it unless I knew I could just like, wow, everybody. I can write music from the piano and from the guitar, but oh. I would, I'm not ready for a concert with one day. Well, you know what, hopefully soon. I mean, you'll, yeah. you'll at least peck or do something and sit there and just look. I'm, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> who, are you, who are some of your musical influences? Oh gosh, starting first with my grandmother again, because okay. She is our matriarch and God bless her. 95 going on 96. Mm. We lost grandpa last year and she got I'm COVID, but fine. she beat, but she beat it. Oh, and so nice. she's she's still mm. with us, 95 and a half. And um, all things music started with grandma for all of us, for my mother, for her sister, her brother, um, all, all of the grandchildren. Um, she plays, she sang, um, stood four feet, 10 and a half inches tall. And when my grandfather would call her to sing the sermonic solo, this little woman walks up and stands in front of the pulpit because that was when they didn't let women in pulpit. Oh, well, they still don't. Back. Some still don't. don't. Some still <laughs> don't, honey. Yeah, but that. But I just want people to know how deeply rooted and how far back I go in this. I got you. We'd be standing at the base of the at the base of the pulpit with the microphone or without the microphone and open her mouth and just fill up the entire room. And so she is my number one musical hero. Hollywood. Absolutely, without a doubt. Moving outside of my family and all of the people in my family that are musical, I then move into Mahalia Jackson, Aretha Franklin, any one of the Clark sisters and their mama, Dr. Maddie Moss, Moss Clark, who I had the privilege of working with as a kid yes. in the National Choir of, of the Church of God in Christ. Um, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Daryl Coley, Donnie McClurkin, oh any one of the Hawkins, um, like Andre Crouch. Yes. Um, yeah, like, and then to flip it on the other side, then you had like Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle and um, mm. uh, Shaka Khan. I was always attracted to voices that just could. And and, um, and, and, it's, and my grandmother at four feet 10 was a. She could, and that's what you do, honey. <laughs> you get, I mean, you can put, just put a mic up to you on any stage. You can go against anybody. I'm from Arkansas. You can sing flat footed anywhere okay lord have mercy for it, real it, it, i mean I, I girl i mean it's like when i say it's an honor <laughs> i mean because i've followed your career 
you know, because at GCI, even though I was into gospel, but you know, they, they, the music is loud, you know, so you're yeah. going to hear everything. And of course, yeah. not like I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was trying not to, you know, especially early on, but I'm like, you just are amazing. You can put you on any stage and I don't want to, you know, I mean, you can literally just about out sing anybody, you know what I'm saying? And we got some, you named some great people, yeah. but you, Kelly Price. <laughs> I, you know, I don't even know that I want to yes. sing them. I just like being named among them. But can I just stop for a quick pause and give you your flowers? Because I hear you. Those were a lot of years ago. But you were always on board. You were always supportive. You were, and whenever I would come up there, El Elroy always knew that I would want to stop by and see you, no matter what. Um, because from album one, there was I made sure that I put a gospel song on every project. Yes, um, that was important for me because um, me being in mainstream music was not about leaving the church. It was about expanding a platform um, to, to have an opportunity to carry messages of faith and love and hope and all of that, even heartbreak, all of that. I, I used to tell people in the, in the early years, I don't say it as much anymore because I feel like they get it now. Being saved, being a Christian, being born again doesn't exempt you from life. Heartbreak still happens, heartache still happens. We still make bad choices. We still choose the wrong partner. We, you know, we go through things and it's not necessarily particularly back then, they're doing better about it now, but there weren't marriage ministries 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There weren't mm -hmm. singles ministries 30 years ago. We didn't have classes where they taught us how to date, how to look for a mate, how to do, they didn't teach us that back then. That's Everything true. was by trial and error. Yeah. You know, if you were dating somebody, they would be like, we don't do dating. You're caught in for marriage or you're not seeing anybody. <laughs> and that's literally what they said. That's true. So better to marry know. than to burn. <laughs> it's better to marry than to burn. So we didn't know. We didn't know what to look for because we weren't taught what to look for. And then, of course, if you came from a broken home situation like I did, you know, it, it you didn't necessarily see it the way you needed to see it. Mm. Um, I love the love that my grandparents had. Um, but you know what? I did never see them do really a whole lot of. And mm. it was it was a more. Um, laid back time, I didn't see them do a whole lot of flirting with each other or even, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or having fun that, but, and that's a part of the relationship too. Mm -hmm. Everything can't be so serious. So, um, you know, fast forward all these years later at 40 something years old, um, you look back and it's like, okay, well that didn't work. So yeah, we won't do that again. And yeah, that didn't work. So we won't do that again. But I think that's all right. Cause that actually worked for me. And, yeah. and but, but being in a place, um, to just be comfortable in your own skin and that kind of thing. But um, going back to giving you your flowers, because that's where I started this part of the conversation at. You were always there. You were always on board. You were always a vocal supporter. Um, and I remembered that. I would tell Elroy when I came to the station, can we stop by and see if before we go? Wow. Um, and so, because um, it was important to me. It was important to me. And I believe that just being able to minister to every area of people's lives, how you live your life, you make the decision on that. Me singing about life and love songs doesn't take away from my love for Jesus. It doesn't take away from my relationship. I'm addressing things that need to be addressed that perhaps were not being addressed enough. And had it been, a lot of us could have avoided a lot of very not so pleasant situations in and life. And that is so true. Well, thank yes. you, Kelly Price. I mean, <laughs> even acknowledging that. And like I said, you know, cause sometimes people are so big on stage. And when I say, you know, in terms of your stature, you know what I'm saying? It's like in your status. You just think, you know, okay, that was so many years ago. Uh, who, Effie, who, who is that? You know, so you don't expect for people to remember, you no, know what I'm saying? Because I, I see you on the Stellars. I see you on the BMIs. I see you on the ground. You know, I see you at all these places. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, sometimes people just keep going. I call them Jesus Junior. People's <laughs> egos are so huge sometimes. <laughs> and, but it's just so nice to know that you're still humble. Yeah. Real quick, um, you said your grandparents taught you to, look at Christianity out of the box. Out and they the didn't realize it. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't even realize it because they, they were very much so traditionalist. Okay. But how that happened for me is because my grandfather also worked in worldwide missions. He okay. traveled to different places in the world. Um, there were things that I was exposed to, even though we were Church of God in Christ, that I knew that some other churches of God in Christ weren't doing. Like they didn't do a whole lot of fellowshipping outside of the Church of God in Christ. But my grandfather had pastor friends um, in our area, they, some of them were apostolic, some of them were Baptist, some of them were, and back in the earlier days, people can attest to this, if you were Church of God in Christ, you didn't do a whole lot of affiliating outside of, of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, but he was also a chaplain at a hospital. He would participate in 
ecumenical activities in the community okay. that were geared more so towards bringing people together as opposed to using God or religion as the thing to polarize us. Mm -hmm. So as a very young child, I started seeing us as a, as a people of believers more as one, whether we prayed the same or not, mm -hmm. whether you know we, we showed our affection and love for Jesus Christ or, or, or God the same way or not. Um, so they, don't, they, they didn't realize it, but they were setting me up to live in a world where I would participate in, in, in a melting pot mm. um, that merged music and ministry and all of these different things. And they couldn't have known it. I didn't know it until that time literally started to manifest in my life. And there are these open doors and I'm like, ooh, that's different. I don't know about that. I don't know, but, and, and I walked through a lot of doors afraid, well, mm -mm, scared, same difference, you know, six in one, a half a dozen in the other, mm -hmm. but literally just saying, okay, God, just you lead me and I'll follow. Mm -hmm. You tell me how to take on this task and I'll do it. And so being able to walk into doors where I've worked with some of the greatest people to ever do this thing called music mm -hmm. and be a part of their journey before you know having my own independent journey mm -hmm. um i knew how to walk in and deal with people with differing opinions okay um it, all of it and it's it's all necessary and i think that as the body of christ as the church moving into this dispensation of grace that we are living in there the earth is different now it is not the same place that we lived in 13 14 months ago it will never be that again yeah we have to learn how to get the word to people who are not gonna hear it traditionally the way it's been given. Um, because True. sometimes those ways present more barriers than opportunity. And um, we, we have to figure out how to adjust. My grandfather, when he left here, he left me with an amazing gift and a burden that I literally get weepy every time I talk about it. I listened to him my whole life, his whole life, talk about the burden for souls that he had. Mm. I, I found out for real what that meant after my last time with him. Mm. He set me up so bad. <laughs> and, and then he was gone. I was with him for his birthday in the end of February. The country went on lockdown on March 16th. Mm -hmm. And the Lord took him home on April the 12th. Mm -hmm. um, but our last time together, um, whereas I had been with him like every, once a month for like the last four or five years, five, six years, um, kids out of the house, it, it frees you up. Literally, I just fly to New York and go hang with my grandparents. Um, but every single time he would pray us out before I would leave and go back to the uh, to airport to fly home. This last time with him, um, he said, I want you to pray today before we go. And I was like, no, grandpa, you always pray. I, I want you to pray. I love you praying for me before I go. And he was like, no, you pray. And I'm like, come on, grandpa, no, no. And then he got really serious and really stern with me. Wow. He said, no, you have to do it. He said, and I need you to lay hands on your grandmother. I didn't like what it felt like in the moment, but I did what he said for me to do. And literally, I understand what that moment was. I totally understand what that moment was. He was gone weeks later and my grandmother is still here. Mm. Ain't that something? So wow. he had me pray us out and then had me lay hands on my grandmother and pray for her that day. Setting you up, getting you he ready. Said, oh, he set me up so bad. I, I just, I, there are some days <laughs> I can sit in the house like, Lord Jesus, and the people just need to know who you are, but they don't want you because we ain't represented you right. And I'm sorry. We just, we, we ain't did the right thing. They think that you're mad. They think that life is over if you get saved. And they just, they don't. And, uh, yeah. My grandfather jacked me up. Oh, no. I'm so sorry to hear. I mean, because I know you did experience several loss. You lost yeah. your mom. Yeah, right at the end of the year, after a year filled with loss of friends and, oh, and cousin. people that, cu cu you know, cousins, people I went to church with, people I went to school with, people I sang with. Mm. Um, and then right at the end of the year, when I thought nothing else could happen. Jeez. Right at the end and of I the am year. so sorry because I know that feeling because I've lost yeah. mine. So, yeah. and it's amazing. No, you don't know how it feels until you lose your mom. Too, yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I, I definitely, you know, I've definitely been praying for you and you. Um, just been, you know, in your thought, you've been in my thoughts. Thank Out you. of all the storms and you've endured a lot, mm -hmm. which ones were probably the most challenging for you? Ooh, um, in hindsight, 
um, and I spoke about this recently. It's the first time I've, this, in this particular period of my life that I've opened up about it. Losing my baby sister was very, very difficult for me. Hmm. She was the baby. Um, you don't, you don't think about burying the baby in the family, right? I know, I know. Um, and I went through a very tumultuous, very tumultuous year following her death. Um, she had struggled with uh, substance abuse since she was in her teens, back and forth with drugs and alcohol. Okay. And um, like months before she had passed, I had reached out to her. I was going to try to get her into a facility she didn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. And um, so when she was gone... Um, and very much similarly in fashion to the way my father died, who also had a substance abuse problem. I was messed up because she was my baby sister, but thinking about that generational thing and how similar they left. Mm -hmm. um, she was a baby when my parents split. So she had actually never lived in the house with my dad. She had never met him. Oh, wow. So for her life to mirror his so closely, um, I was forced to take another look um, at, at what generational curses can do if you don't, if we don't get in there and start addressing this stuff more aggressively. And we can't ignore it. We can't ignore it. If there is something that is, um, that that's in your family, that's rooted in your family, you know what it is. Cause you can see it generation after generation, after generation, after mm -hmm. generation, we have to stop being so weird about this stuff and start having the real conversation. Yes, we can go at it spiritually. Yes, we can pray. Yes, we can fast. But if somebody needs help and they need to go to a doctor or they need to talk to somebody, we need to implement those things as well. It doesn't make you any less faith-filled, mm -hmm. but keep your faith intact. Keep praying. Stay on that. But God has given us resources and he's blessed people with amazing brains, mm -hmm. you know, to, to develop ways and methods to help us deal in these kinds of situations. And so I think that when you have a situation as serious as like substance abuse or somebody suffering from depression and, or that kind of thing, whatever it is, we should take advantage of every resource that we have to get well. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, you know, just getting that out there. And, and so I, I went through a year of first confusion. I started off confused and kind of like, is this really happening? And then I call myself huh, getting angry at God, maybe, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Really, Kelly? Um, I call myself getting angry at God, but I was taking it out on my, being angry with him, don't help me. I was taking it out on myself. I stopped taking really good care of myself. I was still out on the road doing shows, doing everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it turned into this thing where I'm literally finishing my shows, going back to the hotel um, and drinking until I passed out. Wow. I can remember waking up in a pool of my own vomit in the bed. And, mm -hmm. and a year later, literally a year later to the day after my sister died, I was in Chicago for a concert. Mm. and getting dressed and getting ready to leave. And I passed by the mirror on my way to the door of my hotel room. And I stopped and I looked in the mirror and I did not recognize myself. I looked tired. Um, I looked worn out. I looked old. Um, and I had put on about 75, 80 pounds in the course of a year following the death of my sister. Sure. And I broke down and I cried. I cried, cried, cried. And I was like, okay, God, this, this is not, this is not good. I miss my sister. And I said these words, I said, if you help me, if you help, I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. If you help me, I promise you, I will turn this around. I love my sister and I want to see her again, but I don't want to see her tomorrow. Mm. And it was an intentional decision every day from that day forward to get in God's face, first of all, and draw the strength that I needed from him and then do my part. I love it. No more drinking. Let that go. Get back to exercising. Get back to eating the way you know how to how to do and feeding your body. And just and so it was a process. It was a process. 2015 also happened to be the year that I decided enough was enough in, in a, you know, in a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. And I walked away from a 27 year relationship oh, wow. in 2015, um, a, a 24 and a half year marriage. So um it, it was a year of change. It was a year of drastic change for me, but it was necessary. Um, I, can, I can say almost with 100% certainty mm -hmm. that if I did not recognize what I was doing to myself and make those changes, I would not be here. I would have been another tragic story. Wow. And now I can see even just hearing that, and I'm sure people can as well, if you were not grounded in your faith, yes. in the Lord, mm -hmm. in church, yes. you... More than I mean, there, there are folk who are who are who don't make it sometimes, 
But yeah. I see how you had to be grounded. Yes. You had to be. Yes. Wow, what a lot to endure. Yes. Just so yeah. glad you made it through. And I am so ecstatic. He gave me another chance. Another, oh, another, yeah. another, 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 another. Amen, another. amen. And we're going to talk about real quick, because I know our time is winding down, but you know how you named this song. Well, let's just go ahead and, and, and talk about the EP, how yeah. you named it after your sister Grace. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I knew, I knew in the transition period of my life when I started to clean myself up and get it back together that I wanted to do something that would honor her mm -hmm. life. Um, and also help me not focus on how, you know, what it was that actually took her from us. Um, and, and knowing that her name was Sakina Grace, we called her Grace, mm. um, and thinking about what Grace meant. And I'm like, you know what? Grace is everything. Grace literally is everything. So to have the opportunity to honor her by mm. using her name, but then actually talk about what that means, um, that was, that was a beautiful thing. Mm. Writing the song Grace, um, when I fall, uh, it's you I call because you're always there for me. Um, uh, when I think of all I've been through and I think of how you brought me through it, like how many times I failed you, but how many times you've seen me through it, you took my disgrace Hallelujah. and exchanged it for your amazing grace. I'm getting chills. Mm -hmm. um, Powerful. How, how many of us can say that? I've had enough disgraceful moments in my life, um, but through it all, he took my disgrace and he gave me his grace in exchange for it. And so that's the message that I want people to get, whether they go to church or not, whether they, you know, they have grown up and, you know, whether they believe like I believe, it's one thing at a time, one, one plants, another waters, it's God that gives the increase. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to save the world, I'm just trying to do my part. Yes, yes. Yeah. And God knows we need grace. We're living in such unprecedented times now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so much. Um, I mean, sickness, as you were saying, yeah. you lost so many friends. I lost yeah. family members and friends. I, oh, so many lost. Yes. Um, police brutality, a All division in the country. Yeah. Um, what message, or even one of your songs, I think about your song, Healing. Yes. I, I know that was on a previous album, yes. but what song do you think, or what message, as you say, you'd like to give to the world right now, in spite of everything, or in light of everything that's going on? That God's grace is available to everybody. Um, and, and that, and I want people to be more intentional in practicing what real grace is. Mm -hmm. Grace is a gift. Um, it's responsibility. We should be responsible. It's accountability. We should be held accountable. We should hold others accountable for their deeds and, and, and the things that they say. Mm -hmm. Um, but the difference between just, you know, telling people to be responsible and holding people accountable where grace changes that is that you add into you, it's a gift, it's responsibility, it's accountability, but then there's compassion and there's empathy. And that's the difference between offering grace. It's not, it, it becomes not judgment, it becomes restorative. Mm. And so um, if, if a brother is taken up in a fault, if he's found in a fault, we're supposed to restore him. It doesn't mean you don't hold people accountable for their actions. That's not what that means. But it, even in that, it should always be done with the spirit of compassion and empathy, letting people know we want you to be responsible and we're holding you accountable, but we want you to know that with compassion and empathy, we're going to restore you. The Bible says, with love and kindness have I drawn them. We have to be intentional about offering grace because the day you need it, the last thing you're going to want to hear is cancel culture. Hello, we won't, gr God, give me grace. Give me How grace. many songs did you write on here? Because I, I hear you talk about the writing. I mean, and what are you most comfortable in? Writing, producing? Of course, we know you can jam for the lamb. But <laughs> what are you most comfortable in, in your ministry? Writing, believe it or not. And, and, and speaking. You speak, so, I mean, you're so <laughs> articulate. I'm like, this girl, <laughs> oh, you just got the goods, okay? <laughs> I do. So I do, do you that. speak a lot? Do you? Um, not as not so much. I have. I've I've done conferences. I've spoke spoken at churches. Um, mm -hmm. but I'll be moving more into that. I I told you my grandfather. He got me. He he literally whammed me. Oh, okay. Hey, do, do we hear uh, pastoring or something? Yeah, you we know uh, that. You okay. know was crazy. That was prophesied to me as a kid, and and I didn't even want to talk about it. <sighs> I actually see it now. Wow. I can't believe I said that out loud. I see it. I oh see my. it. I do see it. And I see it. I see, I see being able to minister to people who um, otherwise are uncomfortable 
coming into a traditional setting. Love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, because you, again, you can tell every time you speak, wherever you are, you let Jesus shine so bright. I have to. It's about him. <laughs> it is totally about him. I am not smart enough. I'm not, I'm not any of that to do any of this on my own. He oh, graced nice. me with these gifts. He, he plucked me up out of obscurity wow. and said, I'm going to do something with this little piece of here child from the projects. Oh, and, and so I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Never want to disappoint him. Never want to make him ashamed. But I absolutely want to give people the Jesus that I know. And he's not necessarily the Jesus that people have heard he is. Yeah, because go ahead. Yeah, there's a huge difference between what people think this walk is and what it actually is. Mm -hmm. And so if we can start teaching the truth about relationship with Christ, um, I, I think a lot more people would flock to it. And it's not about appeasing or pleasing a crowd. It's about being a soul winner that's wise. I people love it. think that when you get sick, like in my generation, we can go to the movies. We can go, we can do any of that. No, nothing. And, and we can wear pants. We can wear pants. We can wear pants. Make we up blonde hair, blonde hair out question. We couldn't dye your hair. We couldn't wear you know. makeup. And, and I just starting from there, I just want somebody to know, Jesus don't care about the color of your hair. He don't care what shade of makeup. And he wants you to look good, and he yeah, wants you to look good with makeup. <laughs> come on, come on. I, like he, he doesn't care about the shade of Mac that you wear. He don't care if your toes is open in your shoes. He doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't care about, it. all of that stuff is, is external. It has nothing to do with nothing. The reality of it is, is when you come into relationship with Christ and you begin to build on that in your personal time and then getting the word, you're gonna find out who you're supposed to be and craft out what you're supposed to not just feel or look like from the inside, mm -hmm. but when the work is done on the inside, it will show on the outside. I don't need somebody to tell me my skirt is too tight. As I'm walking in this journey with Jesus and seeking him, with all honesty and with the purest of intentions, the things that I need to change about me, he's gonna let me know because then I'm gonna be uncomfortable about it. I don't need you to beat me over the head. Yeah. I, I, I need to know that God doesn't hate me. Mm. I, need, I need to understand that I am the righteousness of God yeah. because of Christ, right? I need to feel like, um, I need to feel like that I, I'm worthy to come to the altar. Mm. I, I don't need to feel ashamed because of who's going to be looking at me or, or what they might be thinking, or that that's such a personal thing. And I, we got, we got to check ourselves on that because if people are walking away because of what you think, now this is the one thing my grandfather was good for saying, I ain't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. Hello. So please don't let me be the thing that keeps you from getting to God. Mm. I can't tell you where to go when your life is over. I got to worry about where I'm going. Amen. It seems like to me, your message for whatever you do, and you, hopefully you will let us know, start pastoring, your message is totally grace. It is. Total it is. grace. The, it's, the, it's, it's the first step. I think if people understand grace, it makes it easier to grow them in their faith. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Man, folk need to get the, this album, um, this CD. Of course, we're going to tell you how to get it, but I got to ask you this, uh, Kelly. Okay. You are fab. You look fabu. You look amazing.com. Hey. Okay. And I know you said you went through all these challenges, which I don't know if everybody knew that, you know, and of course everybody got to be in your business, yeah. but you basically dealt with your weight on your terms in the industry. And I know the industry, especially R and B can be yes. really, and even gospel, to be honest, can yeah. be a little, you know, mean yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So what did you do? What did you do? Because you're looking like slim and trim and cute. I mean, even though you've always looked beautiful. I'm, I'm but, still in a 16 though. I am, I am literally, I'm like still it. in a 16. It, like it. It, it just, it stretches out differently on me. I don't know, but I am, I am still in a 16. Um, what's crazy is I, I think it made it easier for me to make the decision with, um, I, I thought about it a couple of ways. I was grateful that I wasn't forced to have to lose the weight in order to put out an album. Okay. It made it easier for me to, when the time came, take a look at it and say, okay, but you can do better. Mm. You can do better. You know better. You know, we didn't have the best food. We didn't have grocery stores in my neighborhood. We had bodegas. So mm. fresh fruits and vegetables were not something that was readily available. We know how that goes in, in, in underserved communities. So Food, food choices were, were poor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of times 
the only meal came when we were going to school. It wasn't necessarily something to eat when we got home. So, you know, that said, I literally had a conversation with myself. I said, okay, you have young children. Your career has taken off. You proved that a big girl can sell records. But now let's have this, let's have this life conversation. You're not living in a neighborhood where you can't get to a, a grocery store with fresh fruits and vegetables. You're not in a position where you can't do better because you actually are doing really well right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be here to raise your children? Do you want to be, you know, do you want to be, do you want to live long and experience the blessing that God has actually given to you? Or do you want to walk in, in, in undisciplined, you know, behavior and that kind of thing. And especially being on the road is necessary. I, I, there's, I, I remember having an experience. There's nothing like the stage is amazing. The adrenaline will get you through it, mm -hmm. but Walking around in four or five, six inch heels on stage under all those hot lights and all those clothes and all that makeup and the weave or a wig or whatever. And, and being 275, 300 pounds, I, at my biggest, I was at 336 pounds and trying to put on an entire concert and then walking off the stage and experiencing what it feels like when the adrenaline is gone. That was really real too. Okay. And when you're on the road, 250, 300 days out of the year, um, you have to make the decision. It's like, do, how long do you want to keep this up? Mm. How, long, how much longer do you think it's going to last okay. if you're not making intentional decisions? So I tell people all the time, I never, I, I never had a desire to be skinny. I come from a family where the women are thick and they are plump and luscious and beautiful. Yeah. And, and so for me, that's fine. I want to, I want to be the best Kelly inside of, of, the, the temple that God gave me. And so understanding that that even being biblical, that our body is our temple, it houses our spirit, that we, we have to treat it, we have to treat it with respect because we only get one body. So, um, so for me, it wasn't about being skinny. It was about, and, and it still isn't, it won't ever be that for me because I, I like food and I can cook really, really well. <laughs> and, I, and, and I want I don't want somebody food shaming me or telling me I can't eat because I'm heavier than the next person. No, I can and I, I will and I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do look amazing and Thank such you. an inspiration to so many. I'm working on mine, but well, you it's, know, it's, it's, it's a, a, it's, a every, it's not a, it's not a, it's it's a, it's it's the yeah. it's every day. It's it's literally every day. And I've learned to not punish myself. I have bad food days. I have, and I'm like, okay, well, we won't do that tomorrow. And then the next day it's like, yeah, okay, well, we won't do that tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Eventually I get it together, but you know, just no, it's, it's, a, and unless somebody's walked this out, they have no idea what it is. It's attached to a lot of stuff. I can go back and look now and realize some of it was emotional. Some of it was, you know, feelings that I carried from childhood, feelings of abandonment, feeling of neglect, abuse, um, being molested as a child, being raped as, as a young girl, a lot of it, a lot of it. Um, and learning how to, between faith and, and understanding that there are resources and outlets that are available to me and learning how to apply all of those things in combination and concert with each other to come up with the right formula for me. And no two formulas are going to be the same for any one person because mm -hmm. no two people have walked out the same life exactly. Okay. We know what our triggers are. We know all of that. And so I just encourage people, take it one day at a time. Yeah. That's all you can do. It's all you, you know can what? do. Well, you know what they can do too? Yes. Dance, have a dance party. They can now, have a dance a party. Exercise on the treadmill, on the elliptical. Yes. yes. Get a dance party, your latest single. Hello. I promise you, even if they don't get on the elliptical to treadmill, you put that bad boy Walk on. Walk in place. <laughs> oh my God. And just, I you know how many times I have sweated myself and listening to this music before it came out between dance party and I want to thank you. I have literally jumped all over my house and ended up just soaked from under my wig all the way down to my toe. <laughs> That's funny. Now tell people why you chose Dance Party as your first, because some people say Dance Party, that don't sound gospel. Well, right. it is. It, it is. It's really a combination of almost like, what's that song? Everybody dance now. Yes. And, and the other one, um, um, I, I want to, I yes. wanna, what is it? You know how we do it, church. I want to praise and I got to let it yeah. out. Yes, yeah. it's a combination. Yeah. So it is. Tell us, tell us how they come it's about. It's a very intentional combination. So to me, everyday people inspired that. Okay. okay. 
everyday people inspired that. Last year, as I was going through my own ups and downs with losing family members and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. I would see, you know, on, on news reports on CNN and, and see people online being very intentional about trying to take back their joy, to feel some sense of normalcy. I watch parents struggle with trying to keep their kids, you know, here because they're locked in the house and they can't yeah. see their friends and they can't go to school. And even for the parents, they needed to. And I watch people with these dance parties, doing virtual dance parties with their relatives right. in other parts of the country to stay connected. And I watched that and it inspired me. And I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Church was like the ultimate dance party, like a praise break. You let the right praise break take off in church and it's over. You don't even know if you're going to get to the sermon. Hello. And so, the church is the original dance party. It really is. So I was like, mm, we need a good, we need a global dance. We need to start a revival in the earth with a Man. global dance party. And dance pro- party is just a phrase that is recognizable to anybody. anybody. We're not saying we're going to shout. We're not saying it's a praise break. Anybody that sees that name, they get it before they even hear the song. They already know where it's going. And so for me, again, my my platform has been to be able to talk to people wherever they are. And so in, in keeping with that, dance party for me was necessary and it was good for me as well. Um, and we can take it to the Bible. You Every day, it, it's not easy to have joy every day, but it is your choice. It mm-hmm. is your, you get to decide whether or not you're gonna, and, and I tell people, if I said, if you choose joy, joy will choose you. You don't have to feel like it. They mm-hmm. would tell us when we came to church, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You didn't do it even, like you had long days. Sometimes you came to church on a Friday night or a Tuesday night after working and going home and feeding the kids and doing whatever. And you came to church, you made the choice to come to church and to lift your hands. You mm-hmm. made the choice to come to church and open your mouth and, and worship. Mm-hmm. It's a choice. You just, the, if the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? You mm-hmm. should want this joy because a lot of us just got tired after last year. We were zapped, we were zapped. And I can promise you that if you choose joy, if you're intentional about it, in Isaiah, in, uh, in Isaiah, uh, the word says, he gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, mm. the garment of praise for our spirit of heaviness. You put it on like a garment, which means you can also take it off. That's why I'm saying it's intentional. Yeah. Even if you don't feel like it, there are days I jumped around the house just to keep myself from going to a place where I'd be crying all day long. There are days I, I put on old episodes of Martin, old episodes of In Living Color because I needed to laugh. Mm-hmm. I chose not to let myself go down a hole that day. Mm-hmm. So it's, sometimes it's not easy because your feelings can try and overwhelm you, but we ultimately are in charge of our feelings. Amen, amen. And you were talking about 2020 was rough. Yeah. Okay, 2021 ain't too bad. Ain't so, I mean, it's been yeah challenges too yeah it's, so a, it's a slow walk out of message yeah people yeah, still need joy. that message i'm sorry go ahead no choose joy i'm just saying choose joy if you choose joy it, i promise you to choose you you got to and even though kelly i know people are like it's hard to choose joy when you think in your son or your husband or your uncle or your daughter you yeah. know might get stopped or may not and not only just by police brutality but sometimes by us the yeah. carjacking going on, all the stuff that's going on. Sometimes you don't know if you're going to make it from point A to point B, You don't. but you still have to trust God. You got to trust God and choose joy. Uh, you exercise wisdom, exercise wisdom in, yes. you know, in all things uh, with prayer and supplication. Um, mm-hmm. It's not too much. I would say, especially now, we thought that the old generation was team too much. I pray, the, I pray more now. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, because I want God's input on my day. Hey, man, I want it. I want to know if today's a good day to venture out and hit the grocery store and do all of that kind of stuff, because it, it might be the wrong person on the same aisle with me that day. You, we have to think about it wasn't like this before. We literally have to think about every place we go and make a plan. You do. You do. And, it, and it's just as we wrap it up, isn't it amazing, though, as you get older? How the stuff that seemed that didn't make a whole lot of sense then, even when the folk used to testify, I thank God for a sound mind. Listen, you know your name. Keeping me, the the old people say, clothed in my right mind. Hello. If I don't understand what that means, a portion of my health and strength. I mean, whatever you got, And, and 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 like you say, choose joy when you think about the blessings. Yes. Think about the fact that you woke up. A lot of alarm clocks went off. Somebody and didn't hear nobody it. Nobody heard it. Yep. But you did. You heard it. You know, God has given you 
your mind. You know your name. You know, you know, you know her name. There, you know what you did five minutes ago yeah. or five years ago. Yes. That is a blessing. So I think when you think about the stuff, I mean, not the big things, because everything really God does is big. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. think about the fact you got life. Okay. You got life. You got health. You got family. You got friends. Thank you got you another so day. You got another day. He has given you, he he chose to blow breath. Hallelujah. Away. Hallelujah. Okay. So how you gonna how you gonna use this opportunity? How you dance gonna use this, another day of grace? Yeah, another day of grace. How we what we gonna do with it? Dance before the dance. Lord. Have a yeah. dance party. Why not? And thank God for grace, which is the name of your new CD or EP on Motown Gospel. Yes. I am just so glad. It's been a long time since you yeah. gave us something, but yeah. I'm glad you did. Yeah. And I'm yeah. I'm loving this new. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like you're walking in a in just a, a more, what can I say, the, this, this spiritual, this, you know, direction yeah. of purpose, you know what I'm saying? Even yeah. though you've always been a woman of purpose, but yeah. now I think you just seem more focused. I'm settling into it. The kids are out of the house. The kids are grown. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm planning a wedding and, uh, oh yeah. I'm you going to tell us who? A I, wedding for you? Yeah. Who? Me. <laughs> I mean, who, you gonna tell us who it is? Oh yeah, in time, in time. When we go I, 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 I am, and and I'm excited. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about. Um, I'm excited about this new season. You should I, be. I, I am. I am really, really looking forward to changing some minds Amen. and getting people to to meet the Jesus I know. Amen. I mean, you know, uh, he's he's the same Jesus. The same yeah. Jesus, and he, yeah. you know, he never changes. And yeah. I thank you so much for, you know, saying yes to the call. Yes. Yes to, you know, just being a blessing and a gift to the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. not just the church, the world yeah. needs yeah. to hear. Like you say, the, I think you said the, the stage is a pulpit. Yeah. I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. And we need to hear the message uh, that Kelly Price is using to advance the kingdom, because really it's all about the Lord. It is about him. And I, I'm loving your, I mean, I, I'm loving your CD uh, or, you know, of course we say CD, you yes. know, EP CD. I'm right there with you. Same thing. I'm right there it's with all, you. you know what I'm saying? Get it, get it, y'all, get it. Yes. It's, am it's amazing. And it was out on Easter. So it's available everywhere. Everywhere. Music is sold, sold. everywhere music is sold. Absolutely. Well, we I'll see you on y Sunday Best. We see you on um, Sunday Best. We, we are waiting now to get where we, we have, they postponed the season. The executive producers postponed starting mm -hmm. filming because what they're trying to do is bring us back when it is safe to get some oh. kind of an audience. It won't be a capacity okay. audience, but to be able to get some people in the audience. And I understand that, you know, their thing is, the audience has always been such a huge part of the Sunday Best experience, yeah. not just for television, but really when you're thinking about training someone for ministry and artistry, they need to learn how to stand before the people. Yes. And you can't do that if you never stand before the people. Because you feed so, off that energy. You really do feed off the energy. So we want to bring that full experience back. Um, and so prayerfully, we will have an answer soon on when that can happen. Hey, man. Well, we are looking forward to you. I enjoy you so much on there. You. Again, you're so articulate. You're so beautiful. You. you know, and you're, you're so, I mean, what you say, I really, because I feel like you, you know, you've been in secular, you've been in, you know, gospel, you know, I, I really, we, we esteem what you say. You know, yeah. what you say means a lot. Yeah. It carries a lot yeah. of weight. I, I'm happy to be in that position. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would not put somebody on the front lines of a war and, and if they're not trained mm -hmm. and, you know, it, for some people, it's just entertainment and they're hearing a person that they really believe that they can sing, but, but minstrels and, and, and the singers were a part of the armies that fought battles. That's true. They went in to break up the atmosphere before the warriors with physical weapons came in. They went in with spiritual weapons. Okay. I can take you back to the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You go in, you pull down those strongholds and then you go in. And everything, everything starts off that way. And so um, th th it's a great training ground um, to prepare spiritual warriors in the art of, 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 of music, in the art of war, but through worship, through praise, through all of that. And coming up in the church and coming up under my grandmother and my mom and, and, and um, these amazing minstrels, who operated in that realm, um, I had the opportunity to witness it firsthand and to learn it. Um, and, and I had to walk in it 
whether I'm on an R&B stage or on a gospel stage, it was all it was always that for me because and, and even harder on an R&B stage because I'm cutting through so much other stuff yes. to get this message to the people. Mm. The, the, one of the greatest compliments I've ever received from a fan is I come to a Kelly Price concert and my God, I don't, I'm just so, by the time the concert is over, I'm like, I feel like I done fell in love. I done fell out of love. I done made life-changing decisions. I want to fight. I want to laugh. I want to cry. And then I want to go to church. And I'm like, well, job, yes. mission accomplished. That was it. That was it. Mission accomplished. And we need to get out of the box knowing that God can use you in so many ways. Of course he can. Not them four walls. Not the church. I mean, Jesus did not hang out in the church. Was he, he hung out outside. Joseph? Was he not with Joseph? Was he not with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They weren't working in the kingdom. They were working for kings and rulers that served other gods. Amen. But their purpose was to be there a because, God, because God had a plan to show himself mighty in this entire nation where people didn't even acknowledge that he was. Amen. I got to ask you one last thing. Yes. You've sang with so many people, Aretha, um, Mariah, Whitney, yes. Yes. Uh, Prince, I mean, I mean, just something, Ron Isley, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody you'd like to sing with? I mean, whether on re Ooh. record or on stage and concert, anybody else that you haven't sang with? That Celine like, Dion. She's so wonderful. I'd love Celine, to Yeah, she's, she's, she's a bucket list for me. She's, Celine Dion is amazing. Celine Dion, um, geez, yeah, Celine Dion. And I, you know what, it's crazy. I have always loved Bette Midler. She had, she has mm -hmm. this, she she has this she has a presence to me okay um she has a presence to me when she sings and it, it's very much so interwoven with her acting okay. um and her ability to move between like those broadway theater roles and and um film and television that kind of thing um but she just always came off so spunky to me yeah. <laughs> really spunky she just seems like she's a fiery just you know um yeah i, I Absolutely. I'm trying to think, am I missing anybody? I'm trying to think of like- just, Barbara Streisand? Yeah, Bar Bar I wouldn't mind, to, oh my God, I've met Barbara Streisand. I would love to sing with Barbara Streisand though. Like these are just yeah. iconic, iconic voices that have made so many markers, you know, it, it, along the way. And so when I think about it, my musical taste is so eclectic. When I think about being a kid and hearing, you know, their music, Mm -hmm. blended into when rap was coming in and, and the, of the gospel music that we were only allowed to listen to in the house when we weren't sneaking listening to the other stuff when my mama wasn't home um <laughs> but all of it all of it I would I've sung with Shaka Khan before I would love to sing with oh her again God. yes um yeah just just I, I've sung with Gladys Knight before I would love to sing with her again mm -hmm. Anita Baker love her I've sung mm -hmm. with her I would love to sing with her again just you know uh, all of it from this new generation um Jasmine Sullivan, um, uh, uh, her music, of it just she's so talented. Mm. That child is a walking instrument. And it's so funny because I'm calling them children because I am old enough to be her mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, you still in the game, you still relevant, and you know, you still got a, Lord knows you got a voice. Yeah, I God. thank you so much thank for you. this honor of talking to you. This has been amazing and a great catch up. It's been so long. It has. I cannot wait to maybe come to your church. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you speak or have you come to when, when we're open again to a awesome. conference or yeah. something like that. And, and of course, people get the CD, get yeah. grace. Get grace. Not only do we need the CD, but we need grace. But we need grace. <laughs> We need, we grace. need grace and, and I would love for party. everybody have a dance party and, and I want you to get your grace on seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, Vaughn, I'm sure will give you this information, but I actually just completed a, um, a reading plan and study guide on grace for you verse. So yeah, that'll be, know that. yeah, yeah. That'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. I am super excited about that. I get a chance to break grace down one letter at a time. And give us that acronym one more time. Yes. It is a gift. It's responsibility and accountability, but given with compassion and empathy. Oh, That's okay. the difference between the way the world does it and the way we as the body of Christ should do it. It should always be restorative and not fault finding, but holding people accountable, but extending to them compassion and empathy with love behind it so that they can be restored. Hallelujah. That is a message in itself. Yeah. 
And only God's grace can do it. God's grace. You're going to need it. So definitely you should extend it. Freely receive, freely give. Freely give. And we're living in crazy times is all I can say. Thank you. Thank you a billion times. Uh, Continue to just let God use you. Continue to say yes. Continue to smile. Continue to do what you do. Because it's working and it's blessing the world. It thank you, so Kelly great. Price, Motel, you, Gospel, recording artist. Really, she's so much bigger than that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She's so much more than that. Uh, author, I mean, what are you, soon to be pastor? If you ain't pastoring already, speak <laughs> uh, And you sang with some of everybody. Keep on singing. Thank you, thank you. We love you to life. Thank you. Grace, thank you. everybody. Grace, have thank a dance you. party. We are looking for you, Kelly. Absolutely. Thank you. We are looking for you to do so much more great things with thank speaking you. and pastoring, seriously, and marriage. Keep us posted. I will. (laughs) Love you to life. Kelly Price, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless you. I love you. Love you. Bye-bye.